Well, g'day guys, welcome back to another episode and another one with no fishing, but gonna show off something pretty cool. And that is how I brine my baits, toughen them up and get them prime for fishing. We've got some salmon slabs here. This is some pili. Here's some yakas I've done in the past. I'll show you the, the recipe that I use for all of them right after the intro. So let's roll it now. Okay, so this is a method that I've just kind of trial and errored after checking out how a couple of professional bait briners do it online. So basically what you're gonna need is your bait, some water, we're on rainwater here, so I'm not sure if you're gonna wanna use distilled water, it does seem to go for some of the uh, professional guys. Gonna need some fine grain salt, and we're gonna need ice and an esky. Scales for measuring up stuff's pretty handy and a wooden spoon's pretty crucial as well because the mixture that we're gonna make is gonna get crazy cold. It will make your hand hurt if you dip it in for too long. But basically, if you don't know, brining your baits is just a really good way to toughen them up. It also means that they're able to be refrozen and good for the next use as well, as long as you keep them out of the sun and all that kind of thing while you're out fishing. So it's a pretty simple recipe. For every kilo of bait, you're gonna need a liter of water, you're gonna need a kilo of salt, and you're gonna need about one to two times the amount of ice, depending on how hot it is, how good your esky and that kind of thing. There is a little bit more nuance to it, but I'll just explain that as we go along. So first off, I'm just gonna tip, we've got eight kilos of bait, so I've got eight liters of water here. I'm just gonna tip that straight in the esky. And then with the ice and salt, while I am gonna use about eight kilos of ice and eight kilos of salt, to begin with, we're just gonna use about two thirds of that. So I've got five kilos of salt and five kilos of ice. So into that eight liters, there goes five kilos of salt. I do end up with a lot of salt left on the bottom at the end of the brining process but I'd love, rather have a bit left than um, none at all. The saltier that the water is, the uh, lower the temperature is gonna be, the better quality the um, brining is gonna achieve. So I just give that a little mix up. I like to do that before I um, put anything else in. There we go. Now I'm gonna put in our Eight kilos of pillies. So these are IQS pillies, which means individually quick frozen. They're worth getting over the big blocks. Brining the big blocks would probably go pretty good, but just these IQF ones, all the pillies are just in a bit better condition and that kind of thing. There we go. go break them up a bit so and I've just found that having the uh, same amount of water as per bait just means they get a pretty nice covering like that they break apart and settle down, they'll basically all be underwater. And now we're just gonna put in our five kilos of ice. Oh, well, we gotta run away. Uh, 
All right, and there we go. So using the same amount of water as bait and then two thirds that of ice, just gives you the perfect amount that all the bait's gonna be covered. It's nice and chockers in there and I can already feel that that is scary cold. So the ice actually makes the water be able to go below zero. And what we're gonna do is chuck a little water bottle in there too. And you'll see it'll probably be after 20 minutes, half hour, that water bottle will be frozen solid. So the bait's gonna stay frozen. The moisture is gonna be drawn out by the salt solution. And after three days, we're gonna be left with beautiful brined pillies. But what I like to do is every 12 hours, I'll come and give it a stir. Make sure there's not just like a salt layer under on the bottom or anything like that. And then every 24 hours, we're gonna add the last one third of the ice and salt. And so brining works great for pillies. It also works great for fish fillets, which go very mushy if you just freeze them and try and use them as bait. So here I've got a fair few fillets of Australian salmon. All I've done is scaled them and then knocked the fillet off, that's it. And it is just gonna be the exact same recipe for every kilo of bait, which I'm gonna measure up. I'm gonna use a liter of water, gonna put in two thirds the amount of salt and two thirds the amount of ice. Okay guys, here's the progress after 24 hours. You can see there's no ice left, but the water is still scary cold. Hurts the hand after a few seconds. You can see the bottle is still pretty frozen solid. And the pillies are also frozen in the middle too. They're just getting a bit softer on the outside, so that moisture is getting slowly pulled out of them. And in another 48 hours, they're going to be bendable. What the um, pro guys do now is they change the water out every every day, but um, I don't bother with that. I'm just gonna add about a kilo and a half more ice and about a kilo and a half more salt, give it a stir, and then leave it for 12 hours, give it another stir. And then after another 12 hours, we'll come back, give you a look, add a bit more ice, add a bit more salt for the final soak. Okay, here we are after two full days. Still well below zero in here. And the pillies are looking good. They've had the moisture drawn out of them, so they're no longer frozen in the middle. And they're just starting to get that bit of toughness about them, which is what we're after. But still look amazing, nice and shiny. They're looking good, so that's still very, very cold. It hurts the hand. Right here, just gonna add the last bit of salt, last bit of ice, just to get us through the next 24 hours, then we'll be ready to bag them up. And here we are with the finished product. It's been nearly three days, about to head off to work, so I figured I'd do it before that. But they're looking pretty good. That one's got a broken skin, but the skin's looking nice on it, much better than if you just actually salt them where it goes a little bit leathery. But it's the same effect, a few busted ones in there, but that would have happened before they brined. Oops, see if I can bend him, look at that. Beautiful. That's what we're after. So now what I like to do is, I'm just gonna scoop them out and put them on this cloth, let them drip dry just a little bit. They don't need to be completely dry. Then just gonna bag them up chuck them in the freezer and they're good to go you could um, vacuum seal them if you want but for this amount of pillies it's just not worth it for me and I like to just use a scoop to uh, save my fingers falling off because that is still wicked wicked cold in there anyways gonna scoop me out bag them up and then we're good to go I'll show you what they're like um, after they're frozen too because what's going to happen is they'll retain a bit of flex even when they've been sitting in the freezer for a few hours and that's just because all the moisture's been drawn out of them you're just left with pure oily pilly goodness rightio and here's where we started the video off and this is the baits after they've been in the freezer for a couple weeks been out of town and that kind of thing so they've been well and truly in the freezer for a while You'll just see 
through brining that they just retain a little bit of flex in them. There's not enough moisture in them to be frozen solid, which is perfect. Means you don't have to thaw them out when you want to use them. They're ready to go. And they also freeze back or are reusable where you can take these out. You keep them cool in an esky and then you can chuck them back in the freezer. They're going to be just as good for the next time. Whereas if you do that with just some pillies that you um, haven't brined, you'll find they turn to mush. Again, it's the same recipe for yakas here. So three days, topping up with ice, topping up with salt. You can get pretty good, tough little yakas. Heaps better than just the frozen ones. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed. Let me know how you go with it and I'll catch you in the next video.